In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a mouse callback to your image. So when you click on your image, you can get the value of whatever the pixel is that you've clicked on. First, I want to import and display my image using OpenCV just to make sure everything's in the right directory. So I'll have import CV2. I'll have my image is cv2.imread. My file name is going to be colorbars.png. And then I can display this cv2.imshow. The first argument is going to be a window title. Now, for me, I'm going to need this window title in two places. So I'm going to just set it as a variable to make sure that it will be absolutely the same. So this is just the variable and I want to display the image. Now I can do cv2.wait key and I can say this is a zero. And when I run this, my image pops up and this has horizontal and vertical bars of different colors. My goal is to be able to click somewhere on this image and have it tell me the location that I've clicked, X, Y, and the pixel value at the location that I clicked. To do this, what I need to do is I need to tell OpenCV that this window color bars it needs to be able to interact with my mouse. To tell it that this is what's going to happen, I'm going to have cv2.setMouseCallback. And what this function does, first it takes in the window title. So these window titles need to be exactly the same. And then it says what function needs to run whenever my mouse interacts with that title. And this can be any function you want. You're going to have to write it. I'm going to call it get xy. So if I define get xy, it's going to take a couple of arguments. It's going to take the event. This is the type of mouse event that has happened over the window. It is going to take an X value. It's going to take a Y value. This is the location that the X and Y has happened over the window. Then it's going to take flags and you can use this flag to interact with the mouse with a control click or a shift click. And then it will also take something called user data. This is an optional parameter where you can pass information into this function right here. Let's first just print out all of these different variables. Uh, so print, well, we'll give it a little bit more description. I'll say my event is, I need to convert it to a string. Then we can say my X is the X and my Y is the y. Then I can print out what my flags are. And I'll print out what this user data is too. Let's run this. And when I run this, you can see at the bottom where my output is, as I'm just moving my mouse over this image, it's creating a callback. So it's the callback has an event when I move the my mouse over the image as a zero. If I can do this, if you look down, if I click, the event is a one. So an event of a one is a left mouse click. If I release, you can see it's um, without moving my mouse, the event's a four. If I click with the right mouse, it's a two. If I release with the right mouse, it's a five. If I hold the control and click with the left, you see the flag is a 9. If I click with the shift, it's a 17. If I do a control and shift, it's a 25. So I can use the flags to tell if I'm pressing a key, like a shift or control key down while I'm clicking or some events happening. But I need to be able to only look for mouse clicks. And to only look for a mouse click, what I want to do is only have this happen so if my event is equal to a one, which is that mouse click. So now, even though I'm moving over the image, nothing's happening, but when I click, now it's displaying all this information. 
I can also write this in a different way. I can write this as cv2.event, and this is L button down. And I will link all the uh, documentation in the description. But this left button down is the same. It works the same way. Uh, finally, I want to talk about this. what this user data is. This user data, I can just sort of give it some sort of variable if I wanted to, low. And now, when it used to say none, now it's that hello. So I can pass my function some variables, I can pass it a list if I wanted to, dictionary, whatever I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted this function, this callback function, to be able to use some other variables. Let's get rid of the event. Let's get rid of the flags. Let's get rid of the user data. What I want to do is get the value, the pixel value of wherever I clicked. So that will be my value is going to be equal to my image. And I need to give it in terms of rows and columns. If you remember, rows are going down. So those are my rows going down. And this is sort of like my Y. And my columns are going across. And this is like my X. So the fact that I get X and Y, I need to actually switch it. So to get it in terms of rows and columns, I have to go Y and X. And this will give me the value of wherever I'm clicking. And I can prove this. If I click here, it gives me a value X and Y. But if I had switched this right here, when I click at this part of the image, it's going to give me an index out of bounds. Because this image is long this way, it's actually not like this. And that's what the shape it would be expecting is if it was um, that way. So I need to go Y and X. Okay, and let's finally print out my value. When I print out this value, let's go to the white. I get 255, 255, 255. Okay, let's go to the black. I get 0, 0, 0. Let's go to the green. Okay, I get 1, uh, 0, 191, and 0. Let's go to the red. I get 0, 0, 191. Blue, I get 191, 0, This makes sense because I've read this in with OpenCV. With OpenCV, this means that my color channels are blue, green, and red. I'm going to make this just a little bit more explicit. So instead of just printing the value, I'm going to print my blue is whatever the string of image 0, BGR, plus the green. Oops, this is value value of zero plus the green is whatever the string of value one and it looks like I'm running out of room so I will make this go to the next line and the red is going to be whatever the string of value two is now, when I run this, and I click, say, I'm the red, it tells me more explicitly that it's B is 0, it's green is 0, and it's red is 191. If I go to white, it's telling me that all of those values are 0, and the X and Y are also where I've clicked. Hopefully, this has helped you understand how to add callback functions, and specifically mouse callback functions, to your images to make them a little bit more interactive.